Hello scholars welcome back to the great men online learning today we are going to learn chapter 12 that is air water and weather so as you know the sun causes changes in the weather and the heat of the sun affects the movement of air and changes the form of water which which brings about change in the weather so how what uh, how the weather is defined so weather is defined as it is the condition of the atmosphere surrounding us at a particular time and what causes weather so the interaction between the earth's air water land and the sun causes the changes in the weather and there are four main factors that determine the types of weather we will receive that is temperature wind air pressure and moisture and this is the way we decide how the weather is the weather can be hot cold windy dry or humid so now let's see how the sun causes changes in the weather as we know that the part of the earth facing the sun has the day and the other part has night and thus the rotation of the earth on its axis causes day and night that you know and we have also learned about the revolution of the earth around the sun so one half of its when it is close to the sun so that part receives more sun rays and that so there is summer in that part of the world okay and when the part of the earth is away from the sun it's cooler and the, it has shorter days so it is winter in this part of the world so thus revolution of the earth causes changes in the season so now you know that the sun winds and the clouds and the rain decides the weather and in india we have three main seasons winter summer and monsoon and however even during one season you will notice that the weather changes from day to day and sometimes from hour to hour now let's see how the sun causes winds to blow so the movement of wind is affected by the heat of the sun the heat of the sun heats up the air okay and after heating the air becomes lighter and it rises as you can see in the picture the hot air rises and the cool air which is heavier moves in to take its place so this is the way the winds blow now let's see how the sun causes changes in the states of water okay so as we know that clouds bring us rain because the heat of the sun changes water into water vapor and this is known as condensation sorry this is known as evaporation when the water changes into water vapor this is known as evaporation and when the water vapor rises up and forms cloud it means the water vapor has changed again into water and it has forms formed the cloud this process is known as condensation and when the clouds become too heavy they fall as rain and water vapors falls as snow when the atmosphere is extremely cold so this is the way the sun causes changes in the states of water now let's learn about air so we know that air is all around us and you know that air contains water vapor smoke dust and germs also and around the earth there is a thick layer of air which is named as atmosphere and the moving air is called wind and the fast and strong winds can cause a storm so now let's learn about hot and cold air so to learn this let's uh, read activity 1 in that activity 1 you will notice that in whichever position you hold the candle the candle flame always burns upward as you can see in the picture and in the activity 2 you will notice when you will bring your hands close to the sides of the flame and then above the candle you will notice that the hot air always rises and in the third activity also when the smoke from the smoldering paper rushes into the box to take the place of the warm air so this shows that air currents are set up air currents are set up 
okay so to know about land breeze and sea breeze more we have to do one more activity so in this activity what you have to do now you have to take two bowls first bowl you have to fill with sand and other bowl you have to fill with water and first you have to keep both the bowls out in the sun for 2 hours at least and then you have to bring it indoors and then you have to keep it for 1 hour and you have to check the temperature when you have taken those two bowls out then you have to check the temperature and again when you brought them inside after 1 hour you have to check the temperature and then you have to fill this table which is there given on page number 103 of your book in that you have to write what was the temperature of sand and temperature of water when the bowls were outdoors and indoors so in the given time period what you will notice you will notice that sand and water do not absorb or reflect the same amount of heat okay so you will notice that sand absorbs heat faster than water okay and it also cools down faster than water does and on the other hand what you will notice about water that water absorbs and loses heat more slowly than land land refers to sand here and the land and water do not absorb or lose the same amount of heat in the same period of time so, okay and this difference gives rise to a land breeze at night and sea breeze during the day and this can be noticed near the seashores the places near the water bodies so what is sea breeze so during the day the land gets heated quickly but the sea does not so when the air above the hot land gets heated you know that hot air rises up so it rises up as hot air is lighter and the cool air above the sea rushes in to take its place so thus a cool breeze blow towards the land during the day and what happens in the land breeze at night what happens the land cools down faster as you know we have just now compared sand with water so the land cools down faster than the sea and the sea is warmer than the land now the hot air above the sea rises and the cooler air from the land blows towards the sea to take its place so this is the way the land breeze is set up during the night okay so let's learn about the new topic that is water so about 71 percent of the earth's surface is covered with water and where you can find this water in oceans groundwater in glaciers in lakes as well as in the water vapor clouds and precipitations in the environment and the water changes its form on heating and cooling so let's learn how the water changes its forms on heating and cooling so first topic is evaporation so the sun slowly heats the water on the surface of the earth to changes it to, to change it into water vapor and the process of change of water into water vapor due to heating is called evaporation okay and evaporation of water takes place at a faster rate when there is a strong wind or when the water body is very big or the temperature of the surrounding is high or the air is dry okay now let's see what is condensation so when the water vapor goes up in the atmosphere and it forms clouds so when water vapor cools down it changes changes into drops of water as you can see in the picture when the water vapors cool down it changes into water droplets and the cloud droplets in the cloud is formed so this process is called condensation so now let's learn about different types of precipitation however in nature we see water in different forms as you can see first one is the rain that you know second is hail hail is when rain drops pass through a very cold region of the atmosphere they freeze and become hail next one is snow what is snow so when water vapor is suddenly cooled it freezes into tiny white snowflakes the next one is fog 
when does it happen this occurs when thick clouds of tiny drops of water form just above land or water so there is fog next is frost when it is very cold the dew or surface water freezes into tiny white crystals as you can see on the leaves of the plants that is frost and last one is dew so when the water vapor in the air condenses and appears as a droplets on the ground or on other surfaces you must have noticed some dew drops early in the morning on the leaves flowers and standing vehicles so that is dew so these were the different types of water in the environment so now let's learn different impurities that is present in water the first one is insoluble impurities the impurities which can be seen in water next is soluble impurities the impurities which cannot be seen in water and the last one is the disease causing germs now let's learn how we can purify the water so there are three methods given sedimentation decantation and filtration let's learn about them so to separate insoluble impurities from water let water stand for some times okay and the impurities that are heavier than water will settle down at the bottom of the water leaving it clear as you can see in the first picture and this is called sedimentation then now you have to slowly pour out this clear water into another vessel this is known as decantation and filtration is the another process of purification okay here here the filter paper is being used to filter the water now let's see some methods we can adopt to purify the water like chemicals like chlorine are used to kill germs at water works of the city so the process of adding chlorine is called chlorination and why we add chlorine to the water because it kills germs and bleaching powder also kills germs in water and if you are using well water so you should use potassium permanganate okay to purify the water and we can also boil the water at our home because the boiling destroys germs and we can also use a water filter for cleaning water and why these all things should be done because it is important to store and handle the water properly okay so next topic is underground water water changes its form and moves in a cycle in nature that you know and water that falls as rain and the water that we throw away goes down into the ground as you can see in the picture it seeps through the top soil and the subsoil in the porous rock and then it cannot pass through the non porous rock so there is a large storage of underground water as you can see in the picture there is ground water zone it's being shown it's filled with underground water and we can draw this underground water out through tube wells and wells and the places which are dry they have less underground water so what is this new term written water table this is the level of underground water in an area that is called the water table okay and so water is a precious natural resource you can, you know that so we should use it carefully and we should not waste water so let's see what all things we have learnt today so the sun causes changes in the weather it affects the temperature and the length of the day air currents are set up when hot air rises and cooler air takes its place and land gets heated faster than water it cools down faster too and on heating liquid water changes into water vapor this process is called evaporation and on cooling when water vapor changes into liquid water water again this is called condensation and in nature the effect of evaporation and condensation of water is seen as rain dew frost and snow when the water comes back to the earth yes and the water has three types of impurities soluble insoluble and disease causing germs and insoluble impurities can be removed by sedimentation decantation and filtration so this was the end of the chapter i hope you would have understood the topics so the assignment question answers and the exercises related to the chapter 
can be found below in the description box. So now you have to take care of yourself and your family. Study at home. Thank you.